girl, Pastor Stacy, and want to welcome you to the New Hope FTC Church, our Sunday afternoon worship experience. And we're coming live from the beautiful city of Charlotte, North Carolina, the QC. And we know that it's challenging <laughs> because it's the fall season and it's football season, but we yet believe God is Sundays are for church, even when we want to watch the football. But to God be the glory, and we thank you for tuning in this afternoon. So go ahead and take this opportunity to like, share, invite your family and friends to be a part of the New Hope FTC afternoon service. New Hope? New Hope? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We thank God for the NBFA, our Bishop Tito Saunders, and all the organizations and all the ministries that are represented under our reformation. While we prepare to hear the awesome man of God, our very own Pastor Harry Kaysan on this morning, is a couple of announcements that we wanted to make. If you're in the Charlotte area this coming weekend on Saturday, Saturday, October the 15th, we'll be having our annual Pinktober celebration, which is honoring and celebrating breast cancer survivors and their friends and families. So again, if you're in the Charlotte area, join us for our annual Pinktober celebration located at 7701 Paper Birch Drive, right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's in the King's Tree subdivision over at the King's Tree swimming pool. And then I wanna invite all the women to the I-Rise check-in, the I-Rise check-in, which is under our very own prophetess, Michelle Moore, and that's going to be a two-day session held on October the 28th and October the 29th at the King of Glory Breakthrough Temple. Registration is only $55. Again, that's the I-Rise check-in, and that's also going to be held right here in the Queen City. Then also, we got one more. Somebody say one more for ladies. I know we got some stuff going on for the guys too, but right now in this season, it's for our ladies. The NBFA, New Birth Fellowship Alliance, with our very own pastor, I'm sorry, newly appointed overseer designate Jackie Gentry, having her annual woman's retreat on November the 4th through November the 6th, 2022. And the theme is, A Girl Gotta Do What A Girl Gotta Do, Reloaded. Last year, it was amazing. The year before that, it was amazing. Each round goes higher and higher. Again, that's the Woman's Retreat, November 4th through the 6th. A Girl's Gotta Do What A Girl's Gotta Do. And that's going to be held in... Baltimore, Maryland, well, Ocean City, Ocean City, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore at the Grand Hotel. All of this information you can find on our website at newhopeftc.org, on our Facebook page, on our Instagram page, and I also want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, New Hope FTC, <laughs> at YouTube. So, well, all hearts and minds are clear. Please keep those announcements in mind as we get ready for the word. Now, we haven't done it live in a minute, so we ready. So, if we got some blooper reels, just say amen and keep it rolling. Praise God. Thank you, my sunshine. Temple night is on already. Amen. So come on in, come on in, join us. Thank you, Mother Dovey. Thank you, thank you, Minister Brenda Anderson. Come on in, come on in as we prepare for the Word of God on this afternoon. Again, it's your girl, Pastor Stacy, and I'll be back after the Word. At this time, I would like to introduce to some and present to others this awesome man of God who can preach, will preach, able to preach. 
He's originally from the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Woo! Went to West Philly High Speed uh, Boys. <laughs> and he's not going to preach long because he got to watch football today. Amen. So, Lord, forgive him. <laughs> Amen. So, at this time, put your virtual hands together as we welcome to the pulpit our very own Pastor Harry L. Case time the second. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Love, love her to life. I love you to life. I thank you for taking out time, joining in on what is today. And y'all, it's a beautiful Sunday. You want to know why? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing and being excited and being glad about it. And that the Eagles don't play till 4 o'clock. So we was able to go live with no issues. All my Eagles fans, y'all, come on in. Get a good word. I ain't going to hold you long. I'll make sure you get where well, you can sit down and get ready for the word of God. Tag a friend. Tag a relative. Tag somebody you don't like. And tell them to come on in and join us and join us. In this virtual service on today, we are excited because we are still yet continuing as new hope, new hope, new hope, new hope, new hope. Yes, we are still live in the facts, like Rex in the facts. <laughs> Bum shiggity bum. I'm telling you, we are up in here on this Sunday afternoon. And we got to keep it going. And we believe that any day now and by the grace of God, we will be in a position where we can do ministry at the highest and greatest level possible. But until then, you got to do what it takes to get what you want. And you got to keep pushing. And listen, this is similar to what my message is on today. And I'm so excited to be able to come before you on today. Because I was I was praying the last couple of days, like, Lord, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Like, give me clarity on what you want me to say to your people. And you know, while I was waiting for him to give me clarity on what to say to you, he gave me clarity on what he was trying to say to me. Said now, all right, what I'm saying to you, you say that to somebody else. So I want you to know on today, this is a word not just for you, but for me as well. All right, let's go, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Uh, we give you the glory, the honor, we give you the praise. We exalt thee, oh Lord. Uh, we thank you for being such a merciful and a great God and a good God. If it wasn't for your mercy, it wasn't for your grace, we might have done lost our minds. We might have just fell off into the world. Uh, but because of you, God, your strength, uh, we lean on you. We trust on you, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable unto thy sight. And that somebody that hears this word on today will be encouraged and motivated to know they can keep on keeping on. The less of me, God, and the more of you. And we will forever give your name the glory, honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Saints of the Most High God. So on today, on today, we are going to Isaiah, the 38th chapter. In the 15th to the 19th verse. Isaiah 38. 15 to 19. I'm going to give you a few, few moments. Whether you have your Bibles out. Or you got your phones. Your tablets. Whatever device. Whatever you use to read the word. Go out and get it. Give you a couple minutes. If I was in the building. I would say. Tell me to hold on. If you ain't there yet. So I know some of you ain't there yet, so I'm going to hold on. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. In this day and time that we living in, and considering that when 2022 came in, 
It seemed like, man, we got 12 months to go. Now it's October, and we already in October, like the ninth day of October. Oh, and before I go any further, October is a very, 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 very special month to me. Because two people that I love so much, I love so much, this is their birthday. My baby boy, my mini me, little Harry, some know him as Kevin. His birthday tomorrow. Can y'all wish Kevin a happy birthday? Can y'all wish Kevin, wish Kevin a happy birthday. My baby boy is about to be 17. Oh my God. Like, we don't have no more little kids outside of the two grands. <laughs> Ryan and Boo. Wow, my baby boy gonna be 17. And then my big sister, she gonna be here with us in a couple days. She, her birthday's on the 12th. I'm so grateful to life for her. Because when I didn't have nobody, mom and dad was gone. She was there. And I love you, Joy. I hope you see this. I want everybody to know. Outside of Stacy, it's Joy. Two, two female okay size. <laughs> she the one when I act up, she called her, but I'm gonna call your sister. <laughs> I love you, Joy. I thank God for blessing you. He allowed us both to live longer than both our parents. But by the grace of God, I thank God for your life. All right, let's go into the word. Isaiah. 38 and 15. And happy birthday to everybody that's watching whose birthday may be in October. I don't want nobody to feel like they exempt. And if you are, put your name down on the screen. Whether you're watching live or you come back later, say, hey, my birthday is such and such. We're going to give you a shout out as well. But them two, I definitely know. And I wanted both of them to know that I love them so much. And I thank God for their lives. Isaiah 38 and 15. It says, I'm reading from the NIV, but what can I say? He has spoken to me, he himself has done this, that I will walk humbly all my years because of this. Anguish of my soul, 16, Lord, by such things people live. And my spirit finds life in them too. You restored me to health. And you let me live. 17. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. And you have put all my sins behind your back. And for the grave cannot praise you. And death cannot sing your praise. And those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. In the 19th verse, living the living, they praise you as I am doing. Parents, tell your children about your faithfulness. And my title on today is, I'm not better, I'm better. Type it, write it down on the screen. If you're watching it live, all those on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, write down, I'm not better, I'm better. Hashtag, I'm not better, I'm better. And you say, Pastor Harry, why you write, why you want me to write that? I want you to write this because of this. That in life, my first point is that sometimes hope and expectations sometimes go unfulfilled. Mm. I'm going to stop and wait on that again. So I can give you a chance. You, you can turn the music down, Pastor. 
that sometimes turn the music down on the body. Thank you. Sometimes hope and expectations go unfulfilled. And you say, all right, what you mean by that? They go unfulfilled sometimes because of us and not because of us. Sometimes our expectations and things that we hope for, God just don't do it. Is it because we did anything wrong? Because as, as, the, as the writer was saying, he's like, what can I say? You spoke it to me? I mean, what's happening is, is what you has allowed. And you know what? I'm going to be humble in spite of everything that's going on. Because of my years and, 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 and even though I'm in pain, I'm frustrated, I'm mad, I'm upset. I want to throw something through a glass window. I want to smack somebody in the face. I want to act like my man from the a warrior's other day and just punch my teammate to straight knock that ball out. That's how I want to act. Because I'm in anguish. I'm mad. I'm upset. I'm frustrated. He said, but Lord, by these things people live and my spirit finds life in them too. Like we all going through something and we hope for things. We pray for things. We ask for things. And when those things that we want and are expecting to happen don't happen, we go through the situation of, wow, what did I do wrong? What could I do right? What should I do different? Why this? Why that? I thought it was going to go this way. Lord, where was you at? What was you doing? I was looking for you. Oh, the pain in my heart and my soul. I'm frustrated. I can't do this. I can't do that. I want to do this and I want to do that. And I can't do what I want to do. And it's just like, man, if it ain't one thing, it's another. If it ain't problems on the job, if it ain't problems with your mate, if it ain't problems with the kids, if it ain't bills, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And you, you, you start to become better. But I love Isaiah in this situation because he has spent time going over, oh my God, what's going on? You know, it kind of make me think of, you know, anybody enjoy an apple. Apple is great. You know the apple won't be good before you bite it. Even if you bite it on the core, on the outside of the skin. Some people like to take time to rip the skin off. You know, but if you don't rip the skin off, it's still going to be good. Do that to an orange. <laughs> you know, you can't get to the orange. You can't get to the good part of the orange before you get past the bad part. Go buy the orange and don't peel it. Ooh, isn't that a nasty taste? And that's the bitterness. That's the... The frustration, that's the, you thinking you about to eat something that you enjoying, and then it turned out that, oh man, I got to get past this skin to get to the sweetness. Well, I want you to know on today, your bitterness is just the skin to your sweetness. <laughs> yes, you got to get past the bitterness to get better. Yeah, it tastes better at first, but once you get past that skin, it gets better, don't it? I'm telling you on today, get past the skin. The rye, I think that's what they call it, something like that. But get past that and get to the sweetness. Get to the better. But in order for you to get to the better, you got to get past the skin. What I want to compare to that is, is life. Life, we got to get past the struggle. I love in that scripture where it says, it says that the grave cannot praise you. So I know I, I got to praise you in spite of everything that I go through. Everything I go through, the grave cannot praise you and death cannot sing your praise. 
He said, but if I go back a little bit, 17, but he said, in your love, your love kept me in the pit of destruction. And you have put all my sins behind me. We have to know that there ain't no situation that if he let you go in it, that he won't bring you out of it. Even if you got to go in the pit. If I could go through the Bible times, <laughs> as my father used to say, I recall back in the Bible times, that there is so many illustrations of going through the hard times to eventually see it get better. Can you think of Daniel when he was thrown into the pit of the lions? Come on with me, Pastor. And when he was in the grave, and they threw him down in the bottom. He was looking at how it was animals all around him. And he didn't know how he was going to get out. But I don't know if he said to himself, How can I get past this bitter situation? But I know. <laughs> It's not going to stay this way. Because God going to find a way for me to get out. Because I'm not going to be better. But it's going to get better. I don't care what bitterness is going on in your life. I promise you on today. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. Yes. So you don't have to be bitter. Because what your current situation look like. Because you got to have the foresight to be able to see past what's in front of you. I heard a man say, I reckon the problems of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. You must understand, saints of God. That no matter what, even if you find yourself in a grave and down in the pit, God is there. Don't be better, but be better. Let me tell you something. No matter what you go through with that man, no matter what you go through with that woman, don't allow them to make you bitter over everybody. Because better is on the other side. See, the devil desires to steal your joy. The devil desires to steal your peace. The devil desires to steal your love. But I want to encourage you on today. Don't let it go bad. I heard a comedian say, the milk's going bad. But let me tell you something about bad milk. It turns into mayonnaise. Bad milk turns into cheese. Just because it look bad or it start bad, don't mean that's the end of your situation. Little becomes much when it's in the master's hand. It may not be the way you want it. And you know that sometimes there's some things you got to take that don't taste good, but it get better down the line. I know in my house, when we all not feeling well, pastor breaks out that good old stuff. What is it called? Castor oil. It tastes a little bitter, but it won't come out rough. Something about that castor oil, it fix your problems. Couple days ago, my stomach wasn't feeling so well. At first, I just took some metformin. It did a little bit of the trick. And I was sitting there, right? I'm like, I still feel a little bitter. Let me go get some of that castor oil. 
I felt a little bit better. Oh, it gets better. It might be bitter, but it won't stay that way. It gets better, but you got to believe it. You got to stay in the push. You got to stay in the move. You got to be determined. I will not be bitter. I will not go stale. The meat won't go bad. The food won't go bad. No matter what it looks like, it's going to get better. Because I'm not bitter. I'm better. He said he laid down the table before me. Even in the presence of my enemies, he anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy will follow me. Even in the midst of my bitterness, it's going to follow me. In the midst of my struggles, it's going to follow me. In the midst of my hurt and pain, it's going to follow me. It's going to follow me. Do you believe it's going to follow you? Right down on the screen, it's following me. Goodness, mercy, goodness, mercy, it's following me. Not just today, but all the days of my life. And I will, I will, I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord because it dwells with me. Goodness, mercy, joy, faith, deliverance, and don't forget long suffering. It follows you. It follows you. But if you can get past the bitterness, You'll get to the sweet. Listen, Pastor already done told you on today. I wasn't planning on holding you long. But I just wanted to encourage you on today. And let you know that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you don't have to be bitter. But you can be better. You can be better. You can be better. I need you to tell yourself on today. I'm going to be better. I'm not going to be better. I don't care what comes my way. I'm not going to be better. I'm going to shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. And don't be better. Even if it bites you. Shake it off. Even if it hits you. Shake it off. But don't be bitter. Be better. Be better. I'm saying to you, because I need you to understand. I need you to be better. One of my deacons say, when you know better, you do better. And because you don't have to be better, act better. Don't be bitter. Be better. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I want to tell you on the day. Be better. Be better. Be better. Focus on doing what you need to do. To be able that even when you find yourself in situations that sometimes might not even be your fault. And sometimes we suffer for righteousness sake. But you trust God and you be humble, even in your anguish. That he says, Lord, by such things, I have to live with it. But my spirit finds life. There is yet still life. Even in all the bitterness that I have to go through. And that 17 verse say, but surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. God allows us to go through just to see if we can find 
the fine line, the silver lining, and whatever the situation is, can you find the best in whatever your situation is? I got a friend of mine right now. She had to go help her family on an issue with their driving situation. And what she do, she went back and grabbed the old homie, the old ride, and said, you know what? I'll make the best out of this situation. I'm not going to be better because I had to do what I had to do to help my people. But I'm going to make the best out of this situation. I'm not going to lie to make me better. And you know what? Things happen in life that make you feel better. Bad relationships. Bad work experiences. So many things come to make you better. But I promise you on today, God didn't allow it to make you better. Because all things happen under the will of God. Job could have decided to become bitter. Because everything he had, he lost. And his own mate said, why don't you go ahead and curse God and die? The same God you've been worshiping all this time. But I imagine Job could have said to her that surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. Listen, I'm telling you, this is, this is a message I preached not too long ago. That a winner never quits. And a quitter never wins. Don't give up. Don't give in. I promise you. Because it, it's going to get better. Because Job told her, you can go ahead and do whatever you want to do. But I'm going to trust in the God of my salvation. I'm not going to allow myself to become bitter. I'm not going to allow myself to go down because of the unfulfilled expectations of hope in life that I had that did not go the way I wanted it to. Things are not going to go the way we wanted to all the time, saints of the Most High God. Sometimes God going to allow us to go through to see if we can still be consistent even in the storm. You know, it's so easy to be consistent with everything going your way. It's so easy to be consistent when your money is right, your change ain't strange, the, you got a lot of money, honey, everything is great. Yeah, I'm good. But what do you do when things get a little better? It, 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 it gets better sometimes. It gets better sometimes. Sometimes it just make you want to just pop off, snap. But I promise you, if you just continue to trust in God, it'll get better. You got to encourage yourself, saints and most high God. You can't think somebody else going to come and do it. Because it may not never happen. Paul, Apostle Paul said, I encourage myself. That, that song years ago, my old church choir used to say, like, speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. <sighs> Sometimes you just got to encourage yourself. Because you may not be able to reach your best friend. You may not be able to reach your mom, your dad, your, your mentor, your pastor, your bishop, your overseer, your this, your that. And sometimes you just got to go and just cry. I understand that sister son that son that sometimes I just sit and cry. But you know what? After I let the tears out, I shake myself. And I said, God, I'm not going to allow what I'm going through to make me better, but to make me better. Saints of God, I encourage you on today. Be better. Don't be bitter. Because it's easy to be better. It's easy to go down in the dumps. It's easy to give up. It's easy to throw up your heads. It's easy to... Uh, I ain't going to worry about nothing. I ain't going to be worried about I ain't going to do nothing. I'm just, I'm just going to be a bum. Be outside with a sign in my hand. Begging people for something. 
No, man. Kick yourself in your behind. Knock yourself up. Pull yourself up. Strap on your bootstraps. And be better. Stay focused. And you know, the thing about it being better is a level of focusness to say, I'm looking straight. I'm not looking back. I'm not looking to the left. I'm not looking to the right. But I'm staying focused. My eyes is on the prize. And I'm going to put myself in a position where things are going to be better. It was good that I went through this. Because these script, the scripture says these light afflictions is only but for a while. And it was crazy because I had never read this part in Isaiah up until I was preparing for this message. Where he said, surely it was my benefit that I suffered such anguish. But I love how he came back and said, but in your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. In spite of what I went through, how low I went down, how crazy things went, how wild stuff was, that it didn't go too far, that you didn't send me a lifeline. You ain't throw down the rope and said, I see you down there, my son. I see you down there, my daughter. And you ain't going to stay down there. You might have fell down there, but it's time to get up. I'm almost finished. This is definitely my almost finished. <laughs> People get ready. This is a train coming. You don't need no luggage. You just get on board. The train is here. Now's the time. If you want to be better, write down on that screen, I want to be better. I won't be better no more. No matter what come my way, I won't be better no more. Put that on that screen. Bitterness is not in my DNA. Hashtag bitterness is not in my DNA. But I am better. I'm going to think better. I'm going to walk better. I'm going to talk better. I'm going to be better. Because better is my inheritance. I love you guys on today. And I thank you for tuning in and hearing this word on today. This is something that you have to encourage yourself on. This ain't something you can depend on anybody else to do it. When, when those rough times come and they're going to come. You got to tell yourself, I'm better. I'm not better. I'm better. I'm not better. I'm better. I'm not going to be better, but I'm going to be better. I'm telling y'all this because this is what I tell myself. I'm going to be better. And sometimes, oh my God, ah, I could go on all day talking about this this bitterness thing because we all go through it. We all go through it in one type situation form or another. But you don't have to stay in the situation that you in because the power wants to make you better again. I thank you for coming and being a part of this service, this virtual service. Pastor Stacy and myself, I hope that you got something great out of this message. I hope that you was encouraged on this message. If you enjoyed this message, please like and share. Send it to somebody else that, that you know needs some encouragement in their lives. People, somebody that you know that got some rough times going on. Somebody you know that's going through some bitter times. And let them know, baby, honey, child, brother. Don't be better. Be better. God bless you. Amen. 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 Come on and let's put those virtual hands together for Pastor Harry on this afternoon. I'm no longer going to be bitter, but I'm going to be better. If we think back over our lives, there's a lot of stuff that happened that wasn't okay. It was wrong. And you may legitimately have a reason to be bitter. 
But as the man of God said on today, we're casting those old things behind us. We're putting on the whole armor of God and we're moving forward being better, better, B-E-T-T-E-R and not bitter, B-I-T-T-E-R. I was bitter, but today I'm better. I was bitter when they did it to me, but today I'm better. Yeah. Amen. If you better on today, come on, come on, come on. Slap those sanctified hands together and say, thank you. God, I thank you for being better today than I was yesterday. For some of us, I'm better now than I was a half an hour ago before I heard this word. And whether you're watching this even later on, you too could be better and no longer bitter. So, Father, we thank you for the word on today. Now is the time that each and every one of you can be a part of our giving portion of the service. We could never pay Pastor Harry for the word that he delivered on today, but we could be a blessing to his life. For all of our New Hope FTC members here in Charlotte or even in Philly, it's time to give our tithes and our offerings. And the word simply says, will a man rob God? Yes, he will with his tithes and his offerings. Even though we may not physically be together on this morning, we still have, uh, ob we still have obligations and responsibilities to take care of. So at this time, we ask that you go ahead to the cash app, which is in HFT and the word church. Look in the comment section, you'll see Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, uh, Apple Pay for all the iPhone users, all the different ways to give. It's a blessing, it's a blessing being able to give. And it helps us to be better. You might have been bitter over something because you ain't have your money, but now that you got something to give, that means you're better. If you want to be able to give more, you got to give more so you'll be able to get more so that you can be in a better financial situation. I'm not saying we give for God to give us back. You know, I'm going to give you this so you can give me that. But we do it so that we could be better. Amen. And amen. So. Go ahead, take care of those responsibilities. We want to remind you to go to our website. Always check it out. It's always something good. All the announcements that we made before the word are going to be on our social media pages, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on our website. And don't forget, I got to keep reminding you guys, we're trying to hit... 400 before the end of the month, go to our YouTube channel. You might say, Pastor Stacy, I'm not even a YouTube person. It don't matter. As long as you got an email address, go to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, and keep on moving. You got some family members, some nieces, some nephews that do watch YouTube. Tell them to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if this is your first time watching, you can go back and check out Pastor Harry and Pastor Stacy with some of our old sermons. They're all on our YouTube channel. And again, if you don't know Christ as your personal Savior on today, we offer you Christ. If you don't have a church home on today, we offer you the right hand of fellowship. Put hashtag home on the screen and we'll have someone from the ministry contact you. If you want prayer, hashtag prayer. And we'll have someone pray for you on today. And you know throughout the week, we have our prayer throughout the week. We have Ask Pastor Harry. We have our Winning Wednesday. So there's a plethora of things that you can do to stay in contact with the ministry to help you to be better. And every Wednesday at 7 p.m., you can find us on Zoom for our weekly Bible study so that you can learn the word of God so that now this freedom and this betterness that you feel on today, we can teach you the word of God so that you can feel better every day and get better every day. Every day gets a little bit better. Amen. I'm your girl, Pastor Stacy, and again, thank you, thank you, thank you. For joining us for this Sunday afternoon worship experience. Until next time, always remember, there's hope at New Hope. God bless.